Welcome back to part two of our character creation episode with Neil Powell and Tall Squall. Last time we started creating our characters for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Neil is in the middle of creating a dwarven cleric. Tall Squall went with a dwarf as well, but chose fighter as his class. Amelia is tackling a half elf bard, and I am creating a human monk. This episode we will be picking up right where we left off, so enjoy the show. I have to keep remembering that my variant human gets an extra skill proficiency. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I'm going to brag on D&D Beyond where it has everything there. You click the toggles and it automatically dumps it all into your character, uh, which makes it, gosh, so nice. Because even <laughs> even me, because I used to use a forged anvil sheet, which does a lot of stuff for you, but there's still a whole lot of work you got to do on their sheet. Whereas this is just a, and, you know. Uh, you're done and done. Yeah, it's extremely helpful. And I believe you said um, when we were talking earlier that it has a an automatic generator, like randomly oh, yeah. creates a character for you. Um, yeah, actually, it was great. Uh, could not have done a better. You know, uh, uh, now I'm going to brag on Critical Role. Could not have done a better intro last night. They were, you know, it's become the official tool set of Critical Role. But uh, Sam always does these sort of crazy intros uh, each week. And some of them are very silly. And it's kind of like, gosh, is that really helping with, you know, them get their message across? And I'm not sure whether Sam was asked to do this or whether he came up with it. It sure looked like he came up with it on the spot. Uh he said, "I've got a, I've got a contest for, uh, for all the other players. Whoever makes a character first, you know, wins the prize. And so you had the other uh, plus Matt. So you had the other seven players there uh, show how quickly you could literally, with two or three clicks, create a character, a randomized character in D and D Beyond. And I'm telling you, you know, for anyone who was watching and was not." Uh, aware of it. I mean, actually, let's, I mean, here, let me do this right here. Uh, so randomize, choose level three, choose race. So here again, I can choose a race, choose class, paladin, uh, create character. Yeah. So you put in race and class and uh, view character sheet. Let's see what it came up for me. Kumdar Dalin is a Hildorf paladin level three. Uh, 13 strength, 15 dexterity, 14 constitution, 9 intelligence, 13 wisdom, 10 that he is good at athletics and religion. Uh, you know, has taken inflict wounds as a, as a spell. Um, wow. he's an anthropologist. Uh, he is, uh, gives me his height. Uh, let's see. Does, he didn't do ideals, bonds, and traits. So that's not in there. But I mean, everything else is already filled in. Uh, wow. oh, he's a, he was a tiefling because he has a I, hellish rebuke. Must be. Is he tiefling? No, a dwarf. He took hellish rebuke. Uh, so he must have. Let's see, because a tiefling. I have to, now I'm getting into this. Uh, way. what's his? Uh, what's his uh, subclass for? Uh, for his paladin to have hellish rebuke? Her. Now I want to. Now I'm all interested. Yeah, in would stuff. that be a vengeance paladin? Maybe or. Yeah, uh, oathbreaker. He's an oathbreaker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds awesome. Take that. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a really interesting tool. If if you just wanted to, to really test your role-playing skills, roll up a random character for your campaign and and roll with it, you know? Yeah. I, I kind of like that they, they leave the, the traits and, and flaws and everything um, available for you to, to fill in yourself. Yeah. Because that gives you a little bit of control over it. But yeah, that's that's really nice to get all the mechanical stuff out of the way yeah no for sure all right have we all made all of our choices here for those yeah, of us that I think that i'm all set i get plus one to my constitution hit points and we are we are making level one characters this time around so no need to worry about leveling them up at this point actually for for my equipment um i had a choice between a short sword and any simple weapon um and it's it's kind of interesting that you either can take whatever they suggest, the short sword, and just roll with that. But when I think of monks, I don't really think of monks wielding short swords. I mean, there's a lot of uh, wuxia uh, films out there that 
you've got the the short sword monks flying around and doing all sorts of cool things. So I guess I can see that. But uh, with my character as feeble as he is, I'm going to go ahead and choose a quarter staff so he nice. can use that as a walking stick. So um, just to update you, you actually can do a pure random character. Um, what you do is you just don't pick. Uh, you don't when you are doing the random character. You can either set in a race and class, or you literally can just say create character and bam. You have to, the only thing you have to put in is level. Everything wow. else, it because I just I just had it came out. I tried it. And I uh, have a Yon T pure blood wild magic sorcerer. <laughs> that would go very well in a all good aligned player group. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but then if you hit the random character button, then you don't need to listen to our entire podcast about how to make a D&D character. And so, you know, put us out of business. Yeah, so so never do that. Listen to our podcast and do what we say. Listen to it through every time you need to make a character. <laughs> oh, wait a second. How is it randomizing this? Never mind. We can move on. I have a, I have a halfling warlock with a three strength. And a 17 dexterity. So when it says random. It means yeah. random. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it's truly random. Uh, you are really rolling the dice on that one. Ooh. Yeah, because my sorcerer has a 14 charisma, but an 11 intelligence. <laughs> wait, can you, so wait, did you say three strength? I did. How do you even hold your, on constitution. hold your own head up at that point? <laughs> <And I'm> like, <laughs> yeah, th- this Yanti is an eight strength, nine dexterity, five constitution. Wow. Oof. Uh, that makes me feel a lot better about my seven strength. So thank you for that. Oh, wow. It's random spells, too, because it's the craziest <laughs> set of spells we've ever seen. <laughs> uh, Tosqual has created 17 characters this episode. <laughs> I do, yeah, truly. I'm like sitting here. Dink, 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 dink. Uh, too much fun. That's awesome. All right. How about we get down to the uh, actual character then? the character details and background. Um, I know we get a a few basic choices, uh, name, gender, uh, height, and weight. And I know that some people like to select that from the the racial descriptions. It gives you a range between uh, certain heights and certain weights. Um, Or there's actually random tables that you can roll on that will give you a base height that you roll an extra die and add it to that. And then it gives you a base weight, and you roll a multiplier die that multiplies what you rolled for your height and adds it to that base weight. It's a little complicated at first, but once you get used to it, it's not too bad. I will choose to just make stuff up and do what I want. <laughs> you do you. I am going to actually roll because I've always enjoyed rolling on that, uh, that random height and weight table. I have to look at page 121 in the player's handbook. And don't get me wrong, I'm all about random tables. I love random tables. But I don't want to do math. So. No. So I am five foot eight. That's not a bad size. I rolled a 10 for my height modifier, so now I roll 2d4 in order to determine my weight modifier. Three and three is six. So I'll multiply 10 by six. That's 60. Add it to the base weight of 110. That is 170 pounds, if my very basic math is correct. So that's about on point. There you go. And this is this is the point where you get to kind of choose your character's age, your um, color of your skin, hair and eyes, and, and any other different characteristics that you want, if you want your character to have scars or a tattoo or, or things like that. So, Neil, what are you, you going to pick here? How tall are you going to be? Oh, I just wrote in hilarious thing. All right. Um, I wrote hair, most of it, skin, still there, eyes, too, <laughs> height, not tall. Um, and then, I, then I'll then i be old, so then I wrote 150 um, for my dwarf. But um, yes, all of those other things. I like it. Will, co- will come out in play, I assume. Yeah, and dwarves can live for quite a long time, so. That makes a lot of sense. And you, Tosqual, did you? Yeah, I went ahead and did the rolling as well. So my dwarf is uh, four feet, uh, six inches tall, 
And uh, let me do the 256. So that's a 10. Uh, 2d6. Uh, so 130 times that six plus an extra 60 pounds and 190 pounds. Yeah, Too dwarves are, are very uh, hardy. Stout. Full. Oh, Sturdy. Very stout. Dense. 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 That's it. In a very <laughs> not very buoyant sense, <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, so mine is actually going to be on the younger side, uh, and uh, so uh, basically a uh, a dwarf just coming of age, which I claim. Let me let me look at my dwarves. Uh, I claim that that's about the same aging as humans. So I'm going to say he's like 19. Um, let me double check that because I don't think they age. A, I know that they live longer, but I think they come of age about the same speed. Consider young until they reach the age of 50. So in that case, he's actually – no, so he's more like – I'm going to say he's like 40. So he's actually you know, really sort of behind the you know, uh, young for, uh, for dwarves out in the world. That's awesome. I went ahead and went with a uh, relatively young age for a human, uh, 23. Figure he uh, he had a lot of extra training at the monastery because he has been so feeble. So it set him back a few years. I just went with twenty seven because it felt right. I was like, that's a good number. Um, half elves come of age around the same time as humans. They just tend to live a little bit longer than regular humans. Mm -hmm. Not as long as elves, though. Then I totally changed mine after hearing the numbers. And I am now 304. All right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> hey, you are starting, right near the starting end. my life as a cleric. Yeah, that is quite, a, quite an old dwarf there. You're never too old to really do what you love, though. You know, to learn yeah. new things and just get out there in the world. Life lessons. Never too old to become what you might have been. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So... Now that we got those basic details out of the way, um, let's go to the, one of the more "quote unquote" controversial details: the alignment. Um, I know some people are not much fans of the alignment system in D anD. d I happen to like it, um, but you have to keep in mind when you're choosing your alignment, it's not set in stone. It can easily be something that you start the game feeling like your character is going towards these sorts of ideals. But as any good story can tell you, characters grow and change, and so can your alignment throughout the game. Um, the alignment has some mechanical benefits. There's some spells and magic items that only affect s people of certain alignments, either good or evil or whatnot. Um, I know that was... Ex especially prevalent in previous versions, and I'm not too familiar with it in 5th edition. Does anybody have it? It's only a little bit. There's nowhere near what it used to yeah. be. Yeah, I do know, like, there's some, like, animals and stuff like that that are still have specific alignments for, like, um, druids. And, Summoning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the alignment system in Dungeons & Dragons, it's, uh, it's nine different alignments that you can choose from based upon uh, two different factors. One factor is your basic moral values, uh, whether you're good, evil, or uh, kind of in the middle as neutral. And the other one uh, describes your attitudes towards society and order. So you're either going to be lawful, chaotic, or again, right in the middle as neutral. Uh, you stick those two together and you get things like lawful good, chaotic neutral, neutral evil, things like that. And that effectively... Uh, neutral, neutral. Neutral, neutral. Mm -hmm. uh, usually referred to as either neutral or true neutral. I know everyone corrects me, but I just like to say neutral, neutral. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, neutral squared. All right. We have made our, our height and weight choices, and um, we've moved on to alignment. Do you guys have specific alignments you want for your characters, or are you... Um. For myself, just uh, again going with the uh, some of the Mike Merle stuff, uh, you know, one of his things was saying, you know, most dwarves, unless they're sort of extenuating circumstances, are lawful. Um, I think because my uh, character is young, I'm going to say he's lawful neutral because he doesn't. I think he's still very much in the. I'm listening to 
you know, my clan and what they told me I should be, but not quite sure whether, you know, he, he he's young. He's going to go out and do stupid <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Kids these days. He's going to make bad youths. choices. Those 40-year-old <laughs> youths. <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Neil? Um, so I did allow for the age to be that extenuating circumstance and just, you know, and having been in the, the dwarf system, as it were, for so long, I went ahead and went with chaotic good. Um, just because I've seen enough to say, I get that the rules are there, but sometimes stuff has to happen outside of, and, but then also wanted to be a good character. All right, Ryan. Um, I went with my staple, neutral good, uh, because I believe pretty much do good no matter the cost. And that's kind of uh, how I'm picturing this monk who wants to kind of change the world, but he is not really uh, picky about uh, the ways he goes about it as long as he changes it for the better. All right. I picked chaotic neutral. Um, uh -oh. it's, <laughs> um, I, I just like the idea of being kind of like, you know what, whatever, I do what I want, how I feel. Um, I mean, it goes back to my, um, punk rock anarchy roots, <laughs> but it just feels like the right personal choice. There you go. And as a bard, you have no qualms then with, uh, charming people of their money. Exactly. All right. So now that we got those basic details out of the way, uh, we can go on to the personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws, um, and the general background information on our characters. So uh, basically, the those four things that I just mentioned, um, you can make those up if you want. If you have a specific sort of personality trait in mind, or an ideal, or a uh, something that kind of bonds you to your uh, your your class or or your race or whatever, um, and any sort of flaw you can think of, you can put in there. But uh, it's it's probably a lot easier to go and select a background that's provided in the the hand guide and go off of that to determine your uh, your four background um, features. I guess you could call them. So there's, what is there, like 12 or so backgrounds or something like that um, in the player's hand guide? No, there's a lot of them. Yep. And uh, and then, of course, there's a whole bunch more that came out, I think, in Sword Coast Adventures. Hmm. Is that right? Um, I know one of them added a whole ton more. Yeah. Uh, one of the early books. Skag. I'll have to pick that one up because I've always wanted more background choices to go from. And I'm like, I got Xanathar's, I got the the Dungeon Master's guide, I got Volos, but where's all my where's all my new backgrounds? I love backgrounds. Uh, most of them, yeah, are in um, Sword Coast. Hmm. I love picking the backgrounds. It's like my favorite part. Right. I don't care about all the stats. I like all the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't care about that. Those aren't important. <laughs> don't need those to play the game. So I went with Folk Hero because I liked it. I think it works well. I also did come up with a random name because built into D&D &D Beyond oh. is the fantasy name generator. So you just hit randomize and it gave me Tazgrax and I added the last name of Hammerfall. Nice. Um, so then the proficiencies I took uh, just to like better explain my background was smith and leatherworking. So that essentially I have all the skills to make hammers and swords, you know, like very ornate, you know, like leather handles and grips on them and i think like that's what it, like endeared me to the dwarven people over years and years and years of just making things so that's why i am a folk hero amongst the dwarven people Ooh. and then my calling came and i at the ripe old age of 304 <laughs> have become a cleric so i'm trying to find one that's matching kind of where i want this guy to go um which is, uh, you know, again, this sort of young fighter who's just learning his craft. And I'm kind of wanting something that's got the feel of like a squire, you know, like to, uh, you know, that he's sort of a, uh, you know, a, a warrior in training, but went off, uh, to go adventure, uh, 
you know, on his own. So I'm trying to kind of find what that is, what's going to make that uh, work. One of the nice things that I'm, is that there are rules in the Dungeon Master's Guide uh, for to make a custom background. Um, and uh, if things don't quite fit and that it's sort of automatic, that sort of auto balances them. Um, again, in D&D Beyond, there's a nice little selection on there where it, you know, it tells you what you can choose. Uh, you know, most of your backgrounds give some extra skills or tools or languages or things. And, uh, you know, so you can sort of choose an option. If you can't find something that quite fits, you can sort of brew up a story for yourself. Um, I think that, uh, I'm going to go with two skills, one tool and one language. And then it, I don't want to take up a lot of time here, but then you can choose one of the other backgrounds for their feature as your feature that adds into it. Because knight isn't quite fitting there for me because knight's feature is to have retainers. And where I think my characters almost would be one of those retainers. So I kind of got to figure out what fits in. I'm sort of looking here. It might be uh, even like um, the urchin or <laughs> something that, uh, you know, I kind of think of the squire as the guy who, you know, has to run all these errands. So we might have lots of contacts or know kind of who you go to get the thing that the knight wants. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm kind of going to work through that to figure it out um, and uh, sort of go from there. But, don't feel as though if you don't find something that quite matches that you can't do some mix and matching, but there are rules that you need to follow so that it is a balanced background. It isn't just something that he's, you know, hey, my character's good at everything, you know, type idea. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let you guys talk and I'm going to sort of figure out what it is that I want my back, what uh, the mix and match I'm going to do here is. All right. All right. I want to take the charlatan background. Um, cause I like the idea of being sort of snaky and, um, you know, a little bit underhanded, not, not super terrible, <laughs> like not the worst, but, um, you know, not, not great. The kind of person that you kind of have to like check your pockets when you walk <laughs> away, like make sure that you still have everything there. <laughs> so the, the standard snake oil salesman that is, uh, trying to peddle whatever they want. Mm -hmm. This will change your life, I swear. What? All I have is less gold and no other change. See, you have less gold that changed your life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I can, um, as a bard, write my own jingles, which I feel like is, you know, really helpful. I don't have to have to uh, commission anybody to write my, my jingles for my products. Good old fantasy jingles. I can start my own infomercials. <laughs> <laughs> Just ride through the town on your horse slowly spouting off your jingles and and leave the town and everybody will wonder what the heck's going on mm -hmm. so i sell my fantasy george foreman in the back of the cart oh there you go there you go also not a sponsor yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right so for my background i went ahead with uh, a traditional monk sort of background as an acolyte um and that's somebody that devotes your life to a specific uh temple or religion uh, so I actually went and looked through the the list of gods in the player's handbook um, and went to the Forgotten Realms gods, and I was like, well, what looks nice that matches my alignment neutral good? Um, and Lathander, um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, kind of stood out to me as the god of birth and renewal, um, domains of life and light. So I kind of pictured my character as somebody who who loves life and and helping make life flourish i guess you could say but he's not too bright so he kind of is a little slow on the uptake but his heart's in the right place <laughs> he means well he does and how are you doing over there tosqual yeah, so um, I've got this sort of custom squire uh, that I've put together. And what I've done is I've mixed uh, urchin and, believe it or not, clan crafter, but I can explain why that <laughs> is working for me. Um, because as I, with this whole idea of the dwarves, you know, his clan is sort of a warrior clan. So it's him becoming a uh, – you know, hone, trying to hone his skills to become a better warrior. 
And then I went with this urchin uh, piece, which is City Secrets, which kind of was fitting through my, you know, the patterns and flow to cities and can find passes through urban sprawl. Others would miss uh, when you're not in combat. You and companions can travel between two locations in the city twice as fast. Kind of think of that whole, here's the kid who knows how to run errands. You know, he was you know, on the on call to some senior member of this uh, this warrior guild that he was in. And then, so I'm, um, my personality traits, uh, I want to, um, I went with, uh, I want to always want to know how things work and what makes people tick, uh, as one person I did, but it's sort of more geared toward that. Hey, how did you do that really cool move that you just did as a fighter? Um, and then, uh, for an ideal, uh, aspiration, I work hard to be the best that there is at my craft again, being a fighter. And so I've sort of twisted this clan crafter of making items into, you know, that you're built, trying to build yourself to be a better fighter. So this sort of really young, you know, sort of uh, stars in his eyes, squire wanting to, you know, train to be a uh, the best fighter that he can be, Look, you know, kind of idolizing the uh, senior members of his uh, group. So – and then with that, I had picking a skill, prof- choosing two different skill proficiencies, a tool proficiency and a language is kind of what I went with there. Uh, and I'm still figuring <laughs> all that stuff out. But like I say, you know, a lot of these backgrounds, you can sort of mix and match pieces that you like of it in order to build this story like I have about this squire in a fighter's guild. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the, the backgrounds in the player's handbook are – all suggestions they're not set in stone it's it's just a place to get you started if you want to just take one of the backgrounds and use everything that's in there that's perfectly fine but yeah mixing and matching is uh where you can add a little bit more creativity to what you want your character to be but for myself i like i like doing things a little bit more random Mm -hmm. um i'm gonna stick with my acolyte uh for everything and i'm gonna go ahead and roll up the different uh, uh, traits and bonds and whatnot. Uh, so for the different traits, there's eight different ones that they suggest. I'm going to go ahead and roll a D8 and see what I come up with. Seven. I've enjoyed exquisite food, drink, and aristocracy among my faith's most elite. Rougher lifestyles chafe me. Hmm. That's interesting. Are you going to stick with that one? I think so. Uh, might as well. Um, I guess I'll be a little bit snooty in terms of uh, how I like to live, but you know, I'm I'm doing good, so I deserve it. <laughs> what about you, Neil? Are you gonna Are you gonna pick one? Or are you gonna roll on your table? Or um, so I did random for uh, a couple of them. Chose one, and I think one I will like kind of adjust to make more sense. So I kind of yes. The answer is yes. To that question. <laughs> yes. I I like to do them randomly, and then um, if I don't like it, <laughs> roll again or pick one. <laughs> yep. I like to see what uh, what fate picks first, though. That is a perfectly valid way of doing it. Um. So for my personality trait, I rolled a two, and it says I have a joke for every occasion, especially occasions where humor is inappropriate. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. <laughs> Perfect. That's awesome. So for mine, I chose, I'm confident in my own abilities and do what I can to instill confidence in others. Nice. I liked it and I kept it. How about our ideals? So I went with freedom. Chains are meant to be broken as are those who would forge them. And it part goes back to my chaotic of chaotic good. I'm going to go ahead and roll mine up. All right. I went uh, and got a four, and that translates to power. I aspire to someday ascend to the elite of my faith's highest echelon. That's why you've been hobnobbing. So you can eat great food. Yeah, no kidding. I've been hobnobbing trying to work my way up, but you know, I really want to get up there and and do some good from the top. And Tosqual, did you pick? Yep, I did the. I uh, work hard to be the best. I the best there is at my craft. All right. You know, the being being a being a, a warrior, a fighter. There you go. How about you, Amelia? I well, I rolled for my ideal, and I didn't like it. 
So I think that I am going to pick creativity. I never run the same con twice. Hmm. That way they can't get you. Because the one I got was fairness. And that just is like... (laughs) Fairness. Lame. (laughs) I want to be a good person. All right. I'm I'm just sticking with what I get. Um bond. I'm going to go with 4, which which I just rolled. Um everything I do is for those less fortunate. It's kind of fitting for my character. Cuz everybody's less fortunate than you. Well, they will be. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I'm neutral good now, but who knows. So, let's see. I did So this is one that I chose. The other two I had rolled but this one i saw it and it and i i think that's the other thing like i saw it and it stuck out so much that it may it didn't make any sense to actually roll so i chose for my bond to be my tools are my are symbols of my past and i carry them so that i will never forget my roots nice and you're going back to the you know for 300 years essentially i spent time being this weaponsmith and crafter and like i can't it's so much a part of me that I can't forget it or let it go. You know, so I have essentially, I almost, I almost want to just wear like a smock, like you know, like the leather apron that you would have at the forge, and then it just happens to have the symbol of Morden on it. And so, like, that's the only reason you might maybe be able to tell that I'm a cleric. That's awesome. What about you, Talsquad? What did you decide on? So for bonds, uh, I went with the uh, the workshop where I learned my trade. So the I'd say like the training ground where I learned my trade is the most important place in the world to me. So I you know sort of that whole again very idealized of you know being out there with the other fighters and learning with them and you know uh, he it, very sort of starry eyed. Um, I was gonna say our our three hundred year old cleric is gonna hopefully knock some sense into this kid. <laughs> <laughs> He'll take that hammer that he carries everywhere and knock oh, you yeah, upside the head with say, it. Because this kid, you're is gonna just le- gonna be like, <laughs> you're gonna learn why my last name is Hammerfall. Yeah. <laughs> um, I rolled on my table for bond, um, and I got a one. Um, which is, I fleece the wrong person and must work to ensure that this individual never crosses paths with me or those I care about. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. All right. And then flaws. This is my, probably my least favorite and most favorite thing at the same time. Because they're all kind of awful. But that's the point. So I'm going to see what my flaw is. I rolled a six. This one's not too horrible, I guess. Once I choose an objective, I become so single-minded that the rest of my life fades into the background. Is this one you picked, Neil, or is this one that you you rolled? So this is one that I rolled, but then I do want to change it. So what I rolled was, I have a weakness for the vices of the city, especially hard drink, which for a dwarf could be totally okay. But I think I actually want to go with a different route, and given that I am older that I kind of approach my body very holistically, but then like almost to like that umpteenth degree, like every time I get in town, I got to like restock on all the herbs and medicines that I need to like keep adventuring. Like it's a fear of mine that like, if I don't follow this regimen, I'm going to fall behind. I mean, I've also got a 40 year old with me, so (laughs) gotta keep up. Yep. It's good for my joints. It smells Awful. Everyone will know where we are. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for me, I uh, modified my the one, the actual one in there a little bit, but it's the same idea, um, which was I'm never satisfied with what I have. I always want more. I'm going to say I'm never satisfied with my progress. I always feel I need to improve what my skills. So he's sort of this, you know, again, over eager kid who's you know probably a little too hard on himself but you know also knows that you know he's got fighters who are 250 years more experienced than he is you know that uh that he wants to emulate nice i am um, i i rolled a one again um and so i got i can't resist a pretty face i'm gonna i'm gonna stick with that i actually really like all of them for this one but um <laughs> i'm gonna stick with that <laughs> 
I just realized I did not give my character a name. I haven't yet either because naming is the hardest part. Um, I'm real bad at it. Not when you randomize it. Yeah, I did the one click. Yeah. You you and your fancy tools. I know, you know. <laughs> Now, Fantasy Name Generator, you don't have to, you can just go out to fantasynamegenerator.com and use it without doing it through D&D Beyond. That's true. Wake up, wake up from your fugue state like three hours later. Like, what? I've just been making names. <laughs> That's yeah, true. Really. Yeah, Fantasy Name Generator is like, it, you just you sit there and click it. It's just like, it's like crack. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, you can fall down that hole for never yeah. coming back out. <laughs> yeah, dude, I had to like literally sh- shut the window where I was being able to do the one click make a character because it was just like, this, <laughs> this is bad. This is bad. All right. I threw a bunch of uh, syllables together and came up with Jaren Feldspar. I'm not, I'm not liking anything that it's coming up with here. <laughs> that is one of the problems with the random name generators. There's a lot that comes out that doesn't exactly sound the greatest if you're extremely picky. And I tend to be if I don't make the name myself. But we made it through our basic backgrounds. And I think the last portion of character creation is getting a nice little trinket. Um, There's a table in the player's handbook guide that has 100 different trinkets on it. And it could be something kind of mysterious, like a map that you have no idea where it leads to, or it could be something like an old pair of socks. You know, there's, there's quite a variety there, but it's supposed to add a little bit of flavor to your character. Like, why would you have this trinket? And kind of wrapping that into your character background can be fun at times. Um, Or you could just make it so it's actually just, no, I don't, there's no reason. It's just, I haven't bought in socks and you know, 20 years. These still work fine. You go ahead and roll the D100 on this. Yep. So I rolled a 27. So I have a, which is a very nice dwarven thing. I have a shard of obsidian that always feels warm to the touch. Nice. Ooh, that's cool. I rolled a 34. I got a rectangular metal device with two tiny metal cups on one end that throws sparks when wet. What what in the world would that be? So you know what it is, right? No. It's a nine volt battery. Oh it is. What? <laughs> it took me a while to figure it out. I rolled that once and I'm like, what the hell is this? And I'm like, oh, okay. That's awesome. Alright, so I I don't think I have the right list in front of me. So I rolled a seventy. What do I now have? Ooh, I got the list right in front of me. You got a small packet filled with pink dust. So, all right, drugs. It's, <laughs> oh, it's the it's the herbs. Oh, it could like be your herbs, but it's like crazy. Yes, but it's. I feel like it is like on that out outskirts of most people won't think it's okay that you do that, but like I'm convinced I need to do that. Yeah, oh, right into the flaw. So it's not a fallen pixie companion that turned to dust. And I just carry them around. <laughs> just carry them around. <laughs> We were friends, <laughs> and then... I have to find their uh, final resting. <laughs> um, I got an 83, so if you want to look that up for me. Sure, that's a bit of folded cloth that, when unfolded, turns into a stylish cap. Very nice. bardic. That is very fitting for a bard. And you know what? I'm going to write down 9-volt battery in my equipment, because that's it's a lot shorter. To, it is a lot shorter. But that's awesome. The power of sigil transported it to you (laughs) that kind of kind of hints towards uh kind of a cross-dimensional aspect of dungeons and dragons where you know the world that you play on doesn't have to be the only world in your your game you could have crossovers into more modern times or things like that it plays into that whole sandbox aspect of what D D can be and that intrigues me thoroughly so we've done it. We've we've created characters by the the rules of the player's handbook, and now we can actually piece all the pieces together and form a beautiful picture of where our characters came from and how did we all meet to become a first level party. 
So I have some about Tall Squall and I, and this is just kind of something I was thinking is that, you know, I'm going to, let's say, you know, I mean, Tazgrax Hammerfall is ready to set out on his adventure and essentially no one would kind of go with me, but then, and you know, I definitely twist this the way you would see your character doing it. I want to say that like you're, you were allowed to go earlier than would normally be allowed because you were the only one willing to. I'm actually, I, I'm liking this, but I'm actually was going to twist it a little bit because I, I was trying to come up with a last name. Am I a hammerfall and I'm like your like great, great, great nephew or something? And so, you know, and that I, you know, you either talked me into it or I talked you into it or we talked each other into it. Um, you know, me wanting to, you know, me not thinking I should leave training, but you sort of going, hey, but adventure is the best, you know, the best trainer of all. Uh, I kind of see that idea of that maybe we're somehow related or something. I like it. I also love the idea that both of us aren't sure of the ideas, so we'd have to go, yeah, just go back and forth with each other. Like, well, you, like this is the place I'm trying to convince you, saying this is the place that you could learn things that no one else knows, right? And like trying to like play into that. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So I, I kind of like that idea. So I think that I'm actually a hammerfall as well. Nice. I, I like the idea that like you are so over eager that you probably have. Like your dad is like, please take him off my hands. Take him with you. <laughs> <laughs> this kid is driving me nuts. <laughs> Easily could be. <laughs> well, what was your character's first name again, Tallsquad? Valgin. V-A-L-G-I-N. Nice. All right. So how does an adventuring duo of dwarves come upon a temple of Lathander? I mean, if we want to play into my... Um, flaw a little bit more it could be that you know much to the dismay and frustration of my great great nephew is that i go ahead and like go to the temple every time we get into town because i need to like restock on like all the herbs and like remedies that i need and so then like the only option was the temple of lathander okay i like that and then i see my character um, he's kind of, I guess, sheltered a little bit at the temple. Um, he wants to do good in the world, but they're like, yeah, but you're, you're kind of weak and, you know, you, you're not too bright and not many people like you. Um, so, you know, maybe it's probably best for you to devote your life here, but I keep saying, you know, no, I, I want to go, I want to do good. And I kind of see this uh this dwarf come in all the time getting restocked with supplies and one day i really want to uh kind of see what he's all about and decide maybe my best way to do good in the world is to help uh this tarzak out in order to uh to get out of my confines within the temple i accept <laughs> sure <laughs> And I'm thinking that this probably happened on your last restocking mission in order to uh, get ready to go on the actual adventure that you're going to be going on. So, you, you know, we've had conversations, you know, over the months. And then this time you're saying, oh, yeah, we're going to be going on an adventure, doing this fun stuff. And I'm like, well, you know, I might not see you for a long time. So, hey, let me go with you. Get me out of here. And, and I want to say. I really like the idea that somehow we, or maybe not even me, so like at some point Valjan has seen you in combat. I'm not sure why, but then like, so he really wants you to come along to like learn a different perspective. Again, you know, like that's the allure of adventuring is learning skills and techniques that none of the other dwarves back at home would be able to even begin to, to understand. Oh, yeah. yeah no, absolutely. Seeing a monk. Uh, you know, even if you like, if I saw your, you know, wandered through the temple and found your like training ground, you know, yeah. saw your training ground and was like, whoa, like everybody doing their their weapon katas and stuff in the yeah. in the courtyard. And so then it became a, I think yeah, the two of both of us sort of trying to lure you out. Yeah, 
I, I like that a lot. So I have a feeling that due to your need for all your various herbs and tinctures and things, that for some reason I at some point was selling something that you now swear by for whatever reason. <laughs> um, and I, I think, I feel like I want to bring my, my bond into it and just say that like you're headed off on this adventure and it happens to line up with whoever I, I wronged is now on their way into town and I need to leave quickly. <laughs> Yeah, no, I love that. I th- really think that's a cool idea that, that you're, we're kind of like the, hey, here's, here's three people I can, you know, just hook into. Right. I'm with you now. I'm headed, you're headed out of town. I'm with you. And it looks a lot safer to be with you than over there with that person that I owe money to. <laughs> yep. And the fact that you actually have a con going on with, uh, you know, with, with, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, great, great uncle, uh, uh, Ta- poor Tazgrax is convinced that yeah. oh and I also love that it essentially like forces to some degree my flaw onto you in that you know, now you have to to keep it up like keep up the charade use your contacts and everything once you get into town to get me more of whatever it is that you've convinced me I need well, and I like that it goes with one of my one of my things too, which was that I never run the same con twice, and so now here I am forced to keep doing that, which I'm sure I find incredibly obnoxious, <laughs> <laughs> like to sustain this for such a long time. Like I'm sure it's just grating on my nerves. Yeah, I can see you're definitely not a long con person. You know, you want you you're in for the short con, and here you've got you're signed up for the longest of long cons. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> I love it. You keep trying to get out of your con and and something keeps on sucking you back in to our party. It finally gets uh. to a point where I'm like, no, I lied about the whole thing. This elbow rub does not help your joints. <laughs> it's not going to do anything. And you're like, no, it does. It, <laughs> it does. does. I'd like, I'd even love it if it like eventually convinces you that it does work. Like, you're pretty <laughs> yes. confident. That it's effective. Yeah, it was just no something that you like totally whatever, some weed on the side of the road and lo and behold, <laughs> Right, yeah, it's just like mash up dandelions. <laughs> yeah, but hey. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh man, that's good. I like it. Yeah, we have a we have a character party now. Let's go. <laughs> guys, we made a team. Let's go on an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both so much for joining us for part one of our Dungeons and Dragons character creation episode. Um, and we would like to remind everybody where they can find you again. Um, Neil, where can people find you? Oh, any more that's excessive. But you can go to Twitter and go to at DMS underscore block at DMS block where that's the main podcast that I'm on. And of course, you can go over and go to at tentacles pod where you can hear the new call of cthulhu 7th edition podcast that i'm editing for encounter roleplay and because i love it so much i really don't care if you go there but if you do see fit you can head over to my blog where i'm putting out that fifth edition stuff and the url is the struggle is neil.com because i that's, it's hilarious it's a really good pun i like it <laughs> Um, and Tosqual, where can people find you? Uh, the best thing to do is to find me at all my different places is to go to my Twitter at Tosqual, and then you, uh, my pin tweet has links to everything from my D and D campaign that I am uh, the dungeon master for to some other projects that I'm a player in. And would love to uh, see you guys. Let me know that you found me through this uh, podcast. All right. And thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you to everyone for listening to us. And you can join us again uh, for our next episode where we are going to discuss this process. Character Creation Cast is a production of the Block Party Podcast Network and can be found at www.blockpartypodcastnetwork.com slash character creation cast. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, our guests, some of our character sheets, and other shows on the network. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune. 
Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game system used and today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you like the game systems discussed and wish to purchase them, links to the products can be found in the show notes. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time.